Okay, this is a lesson on adding, adding and subtracting radicals, and just to start this concept off, um, let's let's remember if I added two x plus three x, those are like terms. I would get five x. If I subtracted three x squared from seven x squared, those are like terms. I can subtract the like terms and get four x. So when you're adding and subtracting radical expressions, it works much the same way. Uh, you want to think of it as like like radical terms. So if I have 2 root 2 plus 3 root 2, you want to think of that as 2 of root 2 plus 3 of root 2, and that gets a result of 5 root 2. And then if I have 7 root 5 minus 3 root 5, that means 7 of root 5 minus 3 of root 5, leaving you with 4 of root 5. Now, just uh, just remembering now that you know if I have like an expression like five x plus six y minus three x, I can't combine non-like terms, but I can put my three x and the subtraction of three x together. I put my five x and the subtraction of three x together and get two x plus six y. Um, so I, I've got the same idea in play when I add and subtract radical expressions. They have to have the same radical in order for me to combine them. So I can't put these two together or these two together because they have a different radical. But I can put 3 root 2 and negative 5 root 2 together. So I would make that negative 2 root 2 plus my, the non-like term, and again, I can't do anything further with this, 6 root 7. Now, uh, looking down below here, now looking down below here, at first glance, this would uh, seem that I have non-like terms that I can't do anything here, but if I simplify each of these, uh, we may discover something that we can do. So, the root, root 8 is really 4 root 2, I mean 4 times 2, and root 50 is really 25 times 2, and so I make this 2 root 2 plus 5 root 2, and I end up here with 7 root 2. And this next one, once again, first glance, looks like I can't do anything here, but if I simplify these radicals, maybe there's something more I can do. So I have, if I change root 20 to 4 times 5, and I change root 48 to 16 times 3, and I change root 80 to... 16 times 5, I'll end up here with 2 root 5 plus 4 root 3 plus 4 root 5. Now what matters for me to be able to put these together is I have root 5, so these two are my like terms, so, so I'll call this 6 root 5 plus 4 root 3, can't do anything further, uh, and it wouldn't have mattered, I could put those in either way, I could set up 4 root 3 plus 6 root 5. Again, what I'm doing here is I'm simplifying it, I haven't put those instructions in, but that's the, that's the, the, the goal with all of these. Alright, so this next one I have uh, root 200 minus root 75 plus root 48, so let's see what we can do there. Root 200 is 100 times root 100 times 2 minus 25 times 3 plus root 16 times 3. So this would get me 10 root 2 minus 5 root 3 plus 4 root 3. Now remember I need to make sure this is this is like negative 5 root 3 so I want to put negative 5 root 3 plus 4 root 3, so that would be 10 root 2 
minus root one minus one root three, which I would just write root three. Again, I have to make sure that I think of this this term right here as a negative as a negative term because um, <clears throat> you know I can't group with a with I can't uh, that violate the associative property of addition if I group like that and made that nine root three so I got to treat this as like negative five root three plus four root three negative one root three and then ten root two so I have some variable variables involved in this next one uh, so I have root twenty x squared plus root five x squared um, I'm gonna make that 4x squared times 5, and I'm going to make that plus, I'm just putting the square root part in the front, and so this would be 2x root 5 plus x root 5. So interesting thing with this problem is that the radicals are like terms and the number on the outside are also like terms, so I'm going to end up calling this 3x root 5. So, alright, so next, uh, let's look over here next. I have root 3y cubed minus root 12y cubed. So I will make that y squared times 3y and then minus root 4y squared times 3y. And then so I'll take the square root of this y squared and the square root of this 4y squared and get y root 3y minus 2y root 3y. Once again I have like terms with the radicals and the numbers on the outside so like terms. So I have y minus 2y so that's going to be negative y root 3y. That'll be my final answer. Alright, looking down here I have so I have a uh, root, a uh, cube root of 81 minus the cube root of 24. So I want to identify my perfect cube factors in here. So my perfect cube factor is going to be 27 times 3. So 27 is the perfect cube. And then in, in, 20, in, in 24, I have an 8. So and I'll take the cube root of 27, which is 3, and that will leave me with 3 cube root, lots of 3's here, and then minus, I want to take the cube root of 8, which is 2, 2 cube root 3, so these are like terms, so I'll just subtract the, three, the 2 from the 3, and get this is it's 1 root 3, one cube root of three. Okay, and then I'm looking at this one right here. Five root two fifty minus three root one sixty. So I'm going to identify my perfect square factors in two fifty and one sixty. And two fifty that's going to be a twenty five times ten and then minus three and in 160 that's going to be 16 times 10 so I'll take the, so what I'm going to do next is take the square root of this 25 which is 5 and multiply it by that 5 and take the square root of 16 and multiply it by that 3 so I'm going to end up with 25 and that came about by the square root of 25 times 5 and that leaves behind a root 10 and then minus the square root of 16 is 4 times 3 is 12 so then I'll have 12 root 10 and I'll have 13 root 10 
as my final answer there. Okay, so I just have these last two problems to do that involve variables. Uh, in this one I have 3 root 3 root 24 so I have 3 root 24 x to the 4th y cubed plus 2 times root 54 x to the 4th y cubed. Uh, so I want to identify my perfect square factor in 24 x to the 4th y cubed. So I'm going to call that 3. My perfect square factor is 4. That's the perfect square factor in 24. And then I have x to the 4th as a perfect factor itself. I'm going to take the y squared out of the y cubed and then multiply by my remaining factors which is uh, 6y and then plus 2 and the perfect square factor this time is a 9x to the fourth y squared and that will leave behind also a 6y. I'll take the square root of this, the square root of this and multiply it by that 2 so that's going to be a 2 which will multiply by that 3 and get a 6 and then I'll have the square root of x to the fourth is x squared, the square root of y squared is y, and then times 6y plus, and then I'll take the square root of 9, the square root of x to the fourth, and the square root of y squared. But I'm going to take the square root of 9, which is 3, and multiply it by that 2, and I'll get 6, also x squared y, and then times root 6y. I have like terms, notice I have like terms here outside, so I can put those together, and I'll get, again, don't do anything to the exponents, because I'm adding here, I'm just adding the coefficients, 12x squared y root 6y, because I'm just getting a count of how many 6x squared y's I have, another 6x squared y, that's 12x squared y's, and then the root 6y is, acts like a variable and just goes along for the ride. Uh, in this next one, I have uh, the cube root of 135 x to the 7th y to the 4th and 40 x to the 7th y to the 4th. And um, so I've got to identify my perfect square factors in, in 135 and x to the 7th y to the 4th. And so what that's going to get me is my perfect square factor in 135 is 27 and then per, I'm perfect cube factor I mean and then because 27 is a perfect cube and then I'm going to have an x to the 6 and a y cube those are my perfect square factors out of the variable part of it and then times 5xy and I'm going to do the same thing over here my perfect cube factor is 8 and I'm also going to take that x to the 6, y cubed, and multiply that by what remains, which is also 5xy. So I'm going to take the cube root of this part, the cube root of this part, and that will get me 3x squared, y cube root, 5xy, minus, got to take the cube root of that, which is... the cube root, whoops, that's not right. Uh, so I'm going to call that 2x squared y cube root of 5xy and uh, move this up a little bit. And final answer here, whoops, ay, ay, ay. okay, so my final answer here, I'm going to put together the 3x squared y and the 2x squared y, um, and that those are like terms, so that's just 1x squared y, so I'll just write x squared y and then cube root of 5xy. And that's my final answer, and that's the end of the lesson.